Good morning. Good morning. Last Thursday, uh, after the Thanksgiving break, I walked into chapel and I was surprised and delighted to see that the uh, facilities team had, during the break, had put up uh, the Christmas decorations, the greens and the wreaths. And I thought, how nice, especially since I knew that day that Joelle and Mrs. McDowell were going to be talking about Advent, the four weeks leading up to Christmas. And I, uh, I appreciated their talk. They did a lovely job. And Joelle lighted the first candle. The, the, for those who don't know, the custom is we light a candle each week uh, leading up to Christmas of the four weeks of the season of Advent. And I'm going to ask Joelle to come over here and light the first and second candles. Because he did such a good job last week. Thank you. Can we hear it for Joelle? So I really appreciated seeing the decorations. And at the same time, I wondered, well, how does it feel if you're a student at Brooks and you're a Buddhist or a Hindu or you're Jewish or you're Muslim and Christmas isn't part of your tradition? And I thought, how does that feel? And that led me to think about you know, I have a neighbor who every Christmas goes a little over the bo goes overboard on his uh, Christmas decorations. He's got a big inflatable Santa. He's got three or four inflatable reindeer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I look at it and I think it's a little over the top. And that got me to looking, uh, doing a little bit of research. And I found something that I never knew about, which is in Richmond, Virginia, every year, there's a tacky lights tour sponsored by the Richmond Times Dispatch, the local newspaper, and it invites people to get on a bus and tour the 20 or so uh, most tasteless and tacky and outrageous Christmas decorations uh, in Richmond. And uh, here's an example of one. And another one. Now, after looking at these, I thought, well, what, what we do here at Brooks isn't so bad. Um, but still, my hope is that everyone will feel uh, included in what we do and say here in chapel. Uh, and I realize that the focus on Christmas may be uh, off-putting uh, for some of us uh, with our Christmas decorations and the wreath and so on. So I want to say about a word about that. I want to try to put that in, in perspective. For Christians, uh, Christmas celebrates the the coming of the divine of divine love into the world uh, in the person of an innocent baby uh, who was born in very humble circumstances. So that's the Christian way of telling the story of the great spirit of love coming among us. And, and the details are really important to Christians uh, about the baby and the birth and all of that. But I believe that underneath the details, what's, what's really important is the universal message about the great spirit of love coming uh, to us um, and that I believe that message is universal. Um, and that the message is about the great spirit of love coming to us all uh, through humility. Uh, that's why we talk about love coming as a helpless baby because it's when we let go of our pride and our self-centeredness it's when we confront our lack of importance that we begin to discover the truth. And the truth is that there's a spirit of love that's infinitely powerful, that's powerful beyond all our imagining, and a spirit of love that's known to every culture in every, in every part of the world in one way or another. It's, all, it's called Brahma or the great I am or God or Allah or the way or one of a thousand other names. Um, you know, when I was a young guy and I didn't know what to do with my life and I was making some really bad decisions, one of which got me put in jail for a couple of days, uh, I got to a point where I was just up against the wall and I, I didn't know what to do. 
And I said, I just said, help, help, I'm lost here, help me. And in that moment, when I, when I just asked for help, the Great Spirit showed up out of nowhere and filled me with a love and a joy and a strength that I had no idea existed. And that spirit is the love energy that creates and sustains the universe. It's the, and it's also the breath of life within each and every one of us. And I believe, and I, I hope you hear this, I believe that the most important thing any of us can do in our life is to get in touch with that spirit, to become one with it. And that can happen when we let go of our focus on self and let the spirit be in charge. And you don't need to take it from me because there's a cloud of human witnesses from every time and every culture who tell us this over and over again. The Hindu scriptures tell us in the Katha Upanishad, they go beyond sorrow who extinguish their self-will and behold the glory of the self. The Hebrew scriptures tell us, this time in the words of Isaiah, God will be your everlasting light. The Tao Te Ching tells us in the words of Lao Tzu, humility evokes the response of the universe and fills the wise with divine light. And the Islamic tradition tells us, in, the, in this case, these words are from the poet um, Hafez, we have come into this exquisite world to experience ever and ever more deeply our divine freedom and light. And in the Christian tradition, we have these words that we read from Jesus, believe in the light while you have the light so that you may become children of light. And we hear the same message from people who may not be speaking from a religious viewpoint. Um, Annie Besant was uh, a 19th century British feminist uh, who had no religious convictions, but she said meditation means renunciation. It means throwing away everything that one has and waiting empty for the light to come in. And then there's always Leonard Cohen. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. So here at Brooks, we have Christmas decorations in the chapel and we light the candles of the Advent wreath to symbolize the coming of the light of love. But regardless of our religious tradition, regardless of our faith heritage, the light of the infinite spirit of love surrounds us all the time. The spirit of love is waiting for our moment of humility, the moment when we're fully open and able to receive. And when that moment comes, we will be flooded with love and light and joy and strength, a strength that's beyond our capacity to imagine. So whatever our background or tradition, what I hope for all of us is that we will be filled with that love and joy and strength. And I wish you all a joyful holiday season. God bless you. I love you all.